What's going on guys? Welcome to a brand new ranking. Today we're discussing all the Predator films. We're going to be ranking each and every one of them. There's six of them out there that involve the Predator and I'm not talking about how to catch Predator. I'm talking about the alien species, the Predator. Without further ado, let's get straight into it. Coming in and down at number six is going to be Alien vs. Predator Requiem. I have nothing to say about this film. This film is crap. This film is garbage and... Yeah, there's some cool moments with Aliens vs. Predators, but guess what? You can't see a damn thing that's happening in the screen because the cinematography looks like it was played with a f monkey. Maybe that's a little bit harsh to go into context with, but it is true. Alien vs. Predator Requiem, it's one of the worst cinematographies ever. You can't see a single thing going on. Yeah, it's cool. We went to an R rating from the PG-13 from the last one, but we're R rated now. We're taking place in a rural town. We've never seen it in a town before. It doesn't matter. This film is not worth your time. It's one of those films that it had such a cool concept and it just was not executed right. There's some cool mythology building in there, I guess, but it just never works. I mean, number five is going to be the very first Alien vs. Predator. Now, this is kind of a guilty pleasure for me. I don't love this film. Neither do I hate it. I'm just kind of in the middle of it where I watch it. And I'm like, oh, yeah, these are some cool moments. But guess what? Why'd you make PG-13? Come on now. Like, why is this film PG-13? Everything in the, all these franchises have been rated R up to this date, but you made it PG-13 because you're like, oh, R-rated films won't make money. Well, guess what? Yeah, this film made money, but at what cost? We'll say, though, I love that they put in an Antarctica. I think that's such a cool aspect, and it kind of keeps it contained in a central location so you're not worrying about anyone else dying. But having these different scientists and archaeologic expeditions going on is a kind of cool dynamic. And really, the Predator and the aliens going at it is a fun, cool thing to see. It's kind of like when Freddy vs. Jason happened. Now, that film isn't the best, but again, Alien vs. Predator is fun for what it is, but it is not a good movie. Brings me to my number four, which is Predator 2 starring Danny Glenn. Glover. Danny Glover, Bill Paxton, and Gary Busey are easily the best part about this whole film. And seeing the Predator kick some butt, killing some rival gangs is even better. At times this film takes itself way overly serious, which is when it's trying to be kooky and weird and wacky with all the gang stuff and it just never works out for me. I, I get it, a lot of people really enjoy this film and a lot of people find it to be very underrated in the Predator franchise, but the film didn't work out for me. I've seen it once uh, all the way through, which was very recent, and I just sat there laughing. Because there's so many moments in here where I'm like, why is this going on? Why are we doing this? Put me back in the jungle so the Predator can rip some shit up. That's what I felt like. Yeah, it's cool. Danny Glover in here, the way that he says motherfucker is awesome. And some of the dynamics between his crew is great. But with this cop story, it's a cool story and perspective to put it in LA. But it just doesn't work out. It makes you seriously wish that it was back in the jungle. There's some cool action moments in here. But this is one of those forgettable sequels that should have just been VOD. And yeah, number three is going to be the brand new The Predator. Shane Black directed this film. Of course, he played Hawkins back in the original Predator. And I was really looking forward to this movie in a sense this is probably my most disappointing film of this year hope to god venom doesn't disappoint I me mean, damn i'm praying to god it doesn't but i was really looking forward to this movie one shane black made kiss kiss bang bang which is an amazing film if you've never seen it and he also did the nice guys which was my favorite film of that year he's done iron man 3 which was fine i liked it i think it's kind of underrated in the iron man franchise but he got on board to do the Predator, and I was like, this is awesome. He's going to bring his dynamics, his his tone, his humor to this film. And in a sense, he does, but this is more of a comedy than an action film. At times, it even goes self-parody of the movie. And it does feel like a 1980s film in today's light, that it was made today, but it should have belonged in the 1980s. And at the same time, that's a good and a bad thing, because the, yeah, the action is gruesome and gory, and I love the action here. I think the action is awesome. We could have we should have gotten more of it. Seeing this giant elite super predator that we've never seen before tear the shit out of everyone, great. The character dynamics, awesome. That's some of the best parts. There's a motel scene in here that I was laughing and smiling ear to ear, and I was smiling through a majority of this film, but the editing choices in here feel so choppy at times that it doesn't make the film feel like it has a story at all. It feels like it's just a string of gags put together on SNL, but it involves the Predator. It's disappointing because it has a great performance by Boyd Holbrook. It has some awesome side characters in here from the other ones. Olivia Munn actually does a pretty solid job. Trevante Rhodes is great in here too, and Jacob Tremblay actually does an exciting job. I thought he was going to be annoying as the kid, but he did quite a good job. And even though his subplot was kind of stupid in a sense and I didn't like it the most, it still made it enjoyable. Michael Key and Thomas Jane are both in here, and they both do a solid job too. Everyone does a good job. It's just, I don't know what happens. Either studio interference, the director had too much control. I don't know. 
but by the end of this film where it's just setting up for a sequel, you find yourself being disappointed. I was very much in the middle on this film, I enjoyed some aspects, and if for every aspect that I enjoyed and loved, there's something that I hated about this movie. Coming in at number two is going to be Predators starring Adrian Brody. I find this film to be completely underrated. Now it's not the best film in the world and I don't think it's amazing, but it is a blast to watch. Again, this is one of those cool concepts where a bunch of people drop onto a, an unknown planet, Fortnite style, and they have to band together to survive against the predators because they are the prey and the predators, well, are the predators. And that's what I really like about this film. It's really much that cat and mouse game that we had in the first one, but really works on all levels. Once you take us back to the jungle, the thing that we all wanted, Adrian Brody does a solid job. And there, I don't really believe him when he's trying to be all macho-ness and big like Arnold, but it doesn't work out in those aspects completely. Still is fun to watch at least, and having the character dynamics between each and every person in here does work. Even though some of the twists and turns with Topher Grace's character by the end are a little bit stupid, I did like Walter Goggins and Alicia Brog in here. I thought they were the best parts about the whole entire film, especially Alicia. I thought she stole it as Isabella, and I loved what she brought to the role. Of course, coming in number one is the original Predator. It's really hard to top this film. This film is one of those classic action 80s films that I think does still hold up today, especially on 4K. Like, my God, the 4K is beautiful for it. But it has that original cat and mouse game with Arnold, with the Predator, with his squad, and seeing what goes down. You know, I can't express enough how the first time you see this film, you've never been introduced to the Predator. At least I wasn't. And I didn't know what it was. My dad showed me. And maybe I have nostalgic memories with this movie, but it still holds up for me. The action in this film is intense. It's thrilling. It keeps you on the edge of your seat. And the brutal kills, the bloody messes that the Predator leads is just great. That's where I'm getting to this, though. Again, my dad showed me this film when I was younger, and I had no idea what it is. And this movie scared the crap out of me. This thing can go camouflage. It can work that way. It's just undeniably one of the best 80s films. It has get to the chopper now, if it bleeds we can kill it. It has all those great moments in there that I have such a matter of fun with repeating and there's such notable lines that they're used in today as parody level type things, but it, it's notable. Everyone knows those lines and the Predator still remains to be the best Predator film and still one of the best 80s films of all time. Guys, that's my ranking of the Predator franchise. Tell me you guys what your guys' thoughts are. Again, let me hear what your guys' thoughts are and what will your ranking be. I can't wait to talk with you guys down below. Of course, if you guys are new here, hit up Sandwich on Films also down there, because right down there, you guys can get into advanced movie screens and also check out some movie news and even some movie reviews. Of course, guys, until next time, stay classy. Mm -hmm.